So in this video, I'm going to do question 13a, which is an optimization word problem from the Nelson Calculus and Vectors textbook. Um, it's a question that was requested by a student, so let's get right to it. It says an isosceles, uh, I've, I've kind of summarized it here a bit, but it said an isosceles trapezoidal drainage gutter has a cross section as given and will be made from a 60 by 5 meter sheet of metal. Find the dimensions of the cross section that are the dimensions that maximize the cross section. So it was much wordier than that in your textbook, but basically we're trying to find how to maximize this area um, because this length isn't going to change. So it's like one of those open top box questions that you've done before where you have um, a sheet piece of sheet metal. So it's 500 long, that's this length here. That's not going to change. This is the part here that we're going to bend in order to make that shape. So the shape that we're going to make is going to be like this. So all we're really concerned about is this end of it. And then the end, the 500. Oh, and of course, I've changed the 5 meters to 500 centimeters so that you're dealing with proper units. Okay, so it does tell you, um, did tell you in the question that the angle angles at B... A and B are 120 degrees. So that's that's kind of important here. So I have one angle here, one angle here. This is A, this is B, and these are 120 degrees, both of them. Okay, so we're going to need to do a little bit of trig in order to solve this. But what we want to start with, first of all, is what is the relationship between um, well, let's give it some variables here. We'll call this length x. It's going to be the same length here. This length can be variable, right? And basically, y could be zero. It could be like this, right? So that's something we're going to look at as well in a minute. So we have 2x plus y. So 2x plus y has to equal 60 centimeters. 2x plus y is 60 centimeters. Okay, now what we need to do is we're trying to maximize the cross-sectional area, this. So I need to know what is the area of this cross-section. So first of all, what I have is two triangles. So if I drop a perpendicular from here right down like that, I would have two triangles that would be like this. So because I cut this part off, this is going to be 30 degrees, and this will be my height. This is my x, and this is some width up here. So we'll put the w's here as well. That might help. Okay, so what is the area of this end, this trapezoidal shape here? So the area is going to be the area of a rectangle. That's this part here, right? area of the rectangle plus two areas of the triangle. So let's get some, some variables for that. So the area of the rectangle here is going to be y times x or x times y. Oh, sorry, not x. This is h. We didn't give that a variable. We did over here, right? So this is h times y. So this is going to be yh plus two times one half the base, the base is W, the height is H. Oops, so that's going to give me YH plus WH. So that's the area I'm trying to maximize. Now I want to write all these variables in terms of X so that I can have take my A prime in terms of X. I only want one variable here. And I already have one for the y here. Very simply, I could say that y is equal to 60 minus 2x. So that's one of them. That will go in here. So let's put that here right now. 60 minus 2x. I'm going to put it in brackets. And now I need to find um, some way to represent h and w in terms of x. Okay, so we have this little triangle here. And we could say, well, how do I how do I talk about h in terms of x? So h is going to be 
um, well, I have 30 degrees. So that would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse is the cos of 30. So h over x is equal to cos of 30 degrees. Now, do you remember your 30 degree um, special triangle? Maybe I'll put that in here instead of this V. What's your 30? Remember your 30, 60 triangles? So we had this one. This is 60. This is 30 up here. This was 2, 1 square root 3. So that means that the cos of 30 is root 3 over 2. So that means h is going to be x times the cos of 30 degrees. And cos of 30 is root 3 over 2. So that's root 3 over 2x. That's h. Okay, so now we've got this one. Now we need to find w. So I'll just write this here, h in terms of x. This is my first one. Now I'm going to find w in terms of x. So w here, that would be the opposite over the hypotenuse, which would give you the sine of 30 degrees. So w over x is equal to sine 30 degrees. So w is going to be x times the sine of 30. And sine of 30, opposite over hypotenuse, that's 1 half. Okay, so w is going to be 1 half x or x over 2. Okay, so now I've got all the pieces to the puzzle that I need in order to fig finish off this area equation I had here for um, the trapezoidal end. So 60 minus 2x was y. h is root 3 over 2x plus w, which is going to be x over 2. And h again is root 3 over 2x. Okay, now let's expand, simplify, take the derivative, and we're going to be all set to go. Okay, 60 times root 3 over 2. 2 goes into 60 30 times. So that's going to give me 30 root 3x minus 2x times this. The 2s will cancel. That's going to give me minus root 3x squared. And this one times this one is going to give me plus root 3 over 4, x times x, x squared. Okay, so that's my A, my area. I've written it all in terms of x. It's all set for me to take the derivative. And I'll do that right now. A prime. So A prime is going to be 30 root 3. This one is going to be minus 2 root 3x. And 2 times this, the 2 will divide into the 4. That's going to give me root 3 over 2x. Okay, so for critical values, we're going to set a prime equal to 0. To make sure I'm still on the page here. Yeah, okay. So if I set this equal to 0, well, let's write that out first. So 30 root 3 minus 2 root 3x plus root 3 over 2x equals 0. You can see that root 3 is a common factor to all three terms. So I'm just going to cross those out. It's like factoring it out and then dividing it into 0, right? So what am I, what am I left with now? I have 30 minus 2x plus 1 half x is equal to 0. And that would give me minus 3 halves. Bring it over here. Gives me 3 halves. So 30 is equal to 3 halves x. And x is equal to 20. Okay, so I'm saying that the maximum is going to occur when x is 20. When x is 20, that means y is going to be 20 as well. And I need to prove that that's true. Now, I did say at this point that we, if we have 60 centimeters, then um, x has to be greater than or equal to 30 degrees. So x is going to be between 0 and 30. So I'm going to check what the area will be for each of these. So the area 
when x is 0, obviously it's going to be 0. The area when x is 20, now I'm not going to substitute that all in. You can plug it in here. Plug in 20 and you should get about 520 approximately because we have some radicals in here. And if you do at the area at 30, you're going to get about 390. So obviously the right answer was the one we found, which is 20. X is going to be 20. So I'm going to write over here, therefore, maximum max cross section. Cross section, I've got too many S's. When X is equal to 20. Now again, remember if X is 20, I plug it back in here to find Y. 60 minus 40, I get 20 as well. And Y equals 20. So 20 by 20, 20 by 20 by 20. Now part B of the question wants to know what is the maximum volume. So the volume is going to be the area of the base times the height. So part B, maximum volume. We have the area of the base times the height. And the area of the base we found was 520. And this is where you have to make sure that you've converted your 5 meters of length to 500 centimeters. And that's going to give you some great big number like 260,000 cubic centimeters. Okay, so that's all you had to do. Um, I know it's, it's not very intuitive, but if you always do the first thing, which is to find an equation for what you are trying to maximize here. And in this case, it's the area of this trapezoid. So two triangles plus the rectangle. Then do your best to find something in terms of one variable. And this time we, we chose x and found h in terms of x, w in terms of x. Plug it all in, simplify, take the derivative, and check your endpoints as well. It's all part of the deal. Okay, so thanks so much for the question. It was a student who asked me to do this for you. Um, I love getting questions from you. I love... Uh, that you comment, subscribe, and do all those wonderful things that make me very happy. I hope everything's going well for you in this last quadmester, and I'm sure you're all probably all grade 12 students and looking forward to university next year. I wish you all the best. Thanks for watching, and have a great May 2-4.